You're up. How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's uh, Wednesday on this show, and we are going to be talking about Jay Briscoe a lot today. Jay Briscoe passed away yesterday at the age of 38 in a car accident, and uh I've requested everybody, if you've got memories of Jay, the Briscoes, to text them to me, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. There's a lot of news, but I got no plan. I uh, do not have a co-host today. Mike will not be joining us today. He'll be back tomorrow. But uh, I sent out the request for uh, text, and holy smokes, I was bombarded with uh, text messages, and if you did not see the tweet, now you know. Send in your text messages. Favorite memories, 425-780-7566. And uh, after the first break, we will talk about what happened, and then we'll start going through these text messages, and uh, and we shall see where we go from there. So uh, a lot of people had a lot to say, a lot of memories about Jay Briscoe. I could talk a little bit after the break as well. I cannot say that we were, like, great friends or anything like that, but, you know, they had been on the show many times and uh, seemed like many more than they actually were. And Mark, one year, actually was the main event of the Christmas show. And I saw them at uh, at many, many shows over the years. And uh, they were the nicest guys. And I know that when people pass away, you hear a lot of people say that. They were the nicest guys. But, uh, you know, if you, uh, you know, or I'll talk about it after the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi will return tomorrow. Got a lot to talk about today, the life of Jay Briscoe. And uh, apologize in advance if this show goes all over the place, because there's, there's a lot to say about a lot of different things. But he passed away yesterday at the age of 38 in a... In a car accident, which we can talk about here in a while, but like I was talking about before the break, I mean, there's a lot of people that have passed away in wrestling, and, you know, a lot of times after somebody passes away, everyone talks about, man, the greatest guy, the sweetest guy, and uh, I'm not saying that these people weren't great guys and sweet guys, but a lot of them, you hear about this after they pass away, and uh, and we've heard all of that about Jay Briscoe. The Briscoes, as I'll get to here in a moment. But, uh, you know, one of the things about Jay Briscoe and Mark Briscoe is that you heard about that long, long before yesterday. I mean, for years, for years, I would hear from people. And a lot of it was in the aftermath of a very unfortunate tweet that Jay sent out years and years ago which resulted in uh, he and Mark never working for WWE or, uh, I, I shouldn't say AEW. I mean, they were signed to to Ring of Honor under Tony Khan, but as far as, like, the AEW television show, TBS, TNT. And, you know, when it happened, it was it was not good. And, you know, from from all accounts that I've heard, you know, he was he was very remorseful. He apologized. And and he did work very hard to uh, uh, to change afterwards. And there's a lot of stories that wrestling fans never heard. But the the belief within wrestling was that he was very sincere with his apology, and he was very sincere that he had made a mistake, and he was very sincere about changing. And for years afterwards, whenever there was a story, you know. I, I believe they actually were in line for for they were going to go to WWE and then you know the tweet prevented that from happening, and then obviously later on with with uh, AEW, you know executives did not want them on TBS TNT, and this was this was a decade afterwards, and you know throughout that period whenever there would be a story the formation of AEW not doing this, I mean I would I would always hear from people just. It's it's such a shame. They're they're such great guys. Their family, they love their family. They they give you the coat off their back. I mean, I heard it all. 
And now you're all hearing it because, unfortunately, yesterday he was uh, driving with his children. And uh, and there's there's two stories that, you know, one is that he was picking them up from school. The other that he was driving them to cheer practice. But regardless, he was driving them. And uh, a Delaware State Police report noted at approximately 5.09 p.m., uh, Jamin Pugh and his two daughters, age 9 and 12, were traveling on Laurel Road westbound in their 2019 Chevy Silverado 1500. 27-year-old Lillianne Turnahan was traveling eastbound in her 2016 Chevy Silverado 2500, crossed into their lane for unknown reasons. The two trucks then had a head-on collision. Both Turnahan, a Frankfurt, Delaware resident, and Briscoe, a Laurel, Delaware resident, were pronounced dead at the scene. Turnahan was wearing her seatbelt, while Briscoe was not. Both of Briscoe's daughters were, quote, properly restrained in the truck, were taken by ambulance to a local hospital, and admitted in critical condition. It is unknown if alcohol played a factor in the two-car crash. The state police are still investigating, are requesting any witnesses contact them with more information. So obviously there was and is uh, great concern for the children. His wife, Ashley, posted on Facebook today that one of the daughters mentioned was undergoing back surgery and the other is in stable condition. She wrote uh, her daughter, Gracie, is having surgery on her back. She asked for people to, quote, pray for her precious legs to move again. She said her other daughter, Jay Lay, has, quote, some pretty serious injuries, but is stable and resting. The couple's other child, Gannon, is waiting for them at home. There had been, uh, you know, an early report stated that there were uh, two fatalities. So, you know, there was uh, uh, concern last night that the other was his wife. His wife and their other child was at home at the time. So it was uh, Jay and the two daughters. And uh, as noted here, one of them is is injured but appears that she will make a, a recovery and uh and the other it looks like is is at this point paralyzed so uh obviously we're hoping for the best we're wishing for the best for them but uh a horrible story and uh <clears throat> last night on uh nxt in the middle of the show they actually cut to the announcers and the announcers uh mentioned it and the first person to announce all of this publicly was Tony Khan on his Twitter. And so, uh, you know, you've had everybody. The Triple H, it doesn't matter where where people worked. It doesn't matter wherever. Everybody has been sending out all of their, uh, all of their best to the family of, of Jay Briscoe. Uh, like I noted, you know, personally, they'd been on the show. You know, I, uh, I contacted them about the uh, Christmas show and Mark came on and you know, there's a lot of drinking done on the Christmas show, and man, he was, he was all in on that Christmas show, and uh, I don't remember a lot of it, but I remember that it was well, it was well received, and uh, and man, he just jumped at the opportunity. He was so happy to do it, and I saw them many times at shows. Sweetest guys. I saw them just a few months ago, I believe. Uh, I can't remember how long ago it was, but it was at a Defy show, and uh, you know they were there and talked and so nice and the match that they had i apologize i do not remember who it was with but the point is it was a local team and what happened was and i told the story at the time i was in the back i was watching this match of the curtain and they went out there with his local team and they just tore the house down. And I remember saying to Matt Farmer, it's like, is this final battle? I think it was like a it was like a November or something, is why I brought up final battle. But they did not go to the show to like be big stars. They didn't go to the show to whatever. They went to the show and their job was to have a match. And so, man, they went in there and they were going to have the main event of WrestleMania in front of that crowd. It didn't matter who the opponents were. And they just, I remember watching that match going, they are working like it could be the biggest show of the year on, you know, final battle, WrestleMania, all out. And, and then, of course, you know, they came to the back and 
their first question was, was it any good? Did you like it? And then they went right up to the team, and they were hugging them, and they were thanking them. And I was like, my God, look at these guys. Because the fact of the matter is, I don't remember what the uh, – there was a tweet from Voices of Wrestling. It was something like, you know, 100 years from now, people are going to look back at Jay Briscoe matches and go, why isn't this guy remembered as an all-time great? Well, you know, the Briscoes are all-time great. I mean, they're an all-time great tag team. And this is not like, you know, he passed away yesterday, so now we have to – I said this before. And anybody who ever watched the Briscoes, I mean, I realize they never worked for WWE. I realize they never worked for AEW. But how is this not a Wrestling Observer newsletter all-time great tag team? Because they were. They were an incredible, an incredible tag team. Last year, the three matches with FTR, three of the greatest tag team matches you'll ever see. You know, they were both fantastic characters. Mark and Jay both. Jay Briscoe was an incredible promo. An incredible promo. People are putting up promos from like a decade ago. These these promos that Jay Briscoe would cut. I don't know if it was his wife holding the camera or who it was, but, you know, they're just at the chicken farm. And he's cutting these promos about these great matches. And they're unbelievable. And if you go back to old shows, I mean, we would play those promos on the show in awe of these promos that he would cut. So anyway, back in a moment, we'll get your feedback. I got a ton of memories of the Briscoes. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. We got a lot, a lot text messages, memories of Jay Briscoe. And uh, someone texted me here and says, so weird, only Jay died, but you can't talk about him without saying they and including Mark. And, uh, you know, they they were inseparable forever. And granted, there was that period where, you know, Jay went singles and uh, multi-time Ring of Honor champion. But man, they were a team. They were a team in the ring and they were a team out of the ring. And, you know, when, when that, when Jay tweeted and uh and everything that spawned from that you know one thing that uh one thing i always thought about was you know mark didn't do anything mark didn't tweet anything mark never did anything in any of this but but he was his brother and you know mark could have gone to wwe mark could have gone to AEW. mark could have done probably all sorts of things but he stuck by his brother and not only did he stick by his brother but, I mean, to my knowledge, and I don't know if anyone's heard differently, but I never have, he never complained about it. He never brought it up. He never pointed it out. He never said anything about it. It was like the Briscoes were the Briscoes. And if the Briscoes couldn't go somewhere because of something Jay tweeted, the Briscoes weren't going. And, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was something. Let's do some of these uh, text messages here. We got a lot of text messages, emails. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. You can uh, you can uh, email me as well, Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. Aaron here says, I would like to point out Jay Briscoe spent the rest of his life atoning and apologizing for his comments, actually changing and becoming a genuine ally for LGBTQ wrestlers. Briscoes both, in fact, gave their lives and career to Ring of Honor. They were Ring of Honor. Jay is the embodiment of the quote, we're all stories in the end. Just make it a good one. Rest in peace, a good soul. They were a ring of honor. And, uh, you know, the, the promo that, uh, that they cut is mostly Jay, but Mark is there and just being there and throwing in a word every now and then. The promo they cut where they referenced Campbell's Chunky. Dude, I watched that promo a thousand times. And, uh, and I'm not saying this today because it's today. You can go back a decade when we played it on the show and had drops and et cetera. That is one of my favorite promos. I've been watching wrestling for 40 years. One of my favorite promos. It's a nine-minute promo. And uh, it is absolutely it's all over the Internet, so you can't not find it. But, man, I loved that promo. It was incredible. And it was one of, of, I mean, it was one of God only knows how many. But uh, it was great. I actually never saw the Briscoes, said Marcelo, until their match with FTR. Lapsed fan from 2005 
2017. Mostly paid attention to WWE and have heard their names pop up frequently. This three-match series ad with FTR, I immediately became a fan and made a point to go back and watch some of their matches. Truly one of the greats. Hope for the best for his loved ones, especially his daughters and wife. May Jay Briscoe rest in peace. Justin here says, First time I watched the Briscoes wrestle was at the Hammerstein Ballroom for Ring of Honor years ago. I watched Jay Briscoe at Terminal 5 defending his Ring of Honor world title against Jay Lethal in a winner's take all. And last time at House of Glory just last month, they wrestled Jay Lyon and Midas Black in Jay's final match ever, rest in power. We've got uh, this person here says, The Briscoe brothers are without a doubt one of the greatest tag teams in the history of wrestling. The thing I love the most about them was their oldest of the old school promos, whether it be from their farm or a boiler room backstage. Mark and Jade together were always hilarious, yet intimidating at the same time. They could hype you up for any match in an instant. I'm truly sorry for the Puke family in this tragedy. Rest in peace, Jay Briscoe. He did another promo. He was talking about, um, God, who was it? It was, uh, I think it was Davey and Kyle O'Reilly. And uh, he was talking about how they're MMA fighters. And... uh, and he's talking about how you can do your jujitsu, but man, you come to this place, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna leave. And uh, and he was a guy who like, he was so intense and believable in his promos. That you thought, man, you put these guys against an MMA fighter, it's not gonna end well for that MMA fighter, even though they were not MMA fighters. So, this person says, I had the pleasure to watch Jay Briscoe live, close in person, at a Ring of Honor show in 2011. Where he wrestled against me and Ro- or, or he wrestled against Roderick Strong. Me and my brother met with Jay and Mark after the show, and they couldn't be any nicer to the two of us. I always loved them as a tag team. Rest in peace, Jay. That is from Kyle. Again, emails Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. And man, we got a lot of text messages here. This person says, uh, please post the Campbell's Chunky promo on Twitter. I spent an hour last night looking and couldn't find it. What? I'll try and find. I mean, it's on our board. I'll I'll uh, I'll see if I can tweet it out here. It's on YouTube. I mean, someone can post it on Twitter. I'll retweet it here in probably about like ten seconds. But uh, it was also pointed out to me if you go to uh, uh, Reddit, there's a bunch of threads, including giant compilations of uh, the best Briscoe matches, the best uh, uh, promos, and the whole nine yards. So if you want a a deep dive. As they say, you can uh, go up there and, and see a bunch of those. But I'll, I'll try to find that uh, Camel's Chunky and repost it. Chris from Kalamazoo here says, Devastated by the loss of Jay Briscoe. Their feud with FTR last year was a revelation. They will be sorely missed. Some of the absolute best promos in the biz. This person here says, April 2022, Ring of Honor pay-per-view. I was watching the pay-per-view, and it caught the attention of my non-wrestling fan roommates. We spent the entire night watching Briscoes and FTR, but the fight on the farm captured all of our imaginations. It is still one of my favorite nights over the past year. Thank you, Jay. Rest in peace. Bernier says, uh, this is Eddie. Met uh, Jay and Mark a couple of times after getting back into wrestling in the mid-2000s. I was amazed at the energy Jay and Mark brought to the ring. My best memory is of running into him at the gym on the inaugural Jericho Cruise. I waited until he was done with his workout, asked for a quick picture. His response, hell yeah! Class act. This person here says, rest in peace, Jay. The Briscoes versus FTR double dog collar match was a bloody masterpiece. Although it was one of Jay's last matches. Man, what a way. Do you think AEW does some sort of tribute for him on Dynamite tonight, despite WBD not wanting him on their networks? Not sure. But, uh, you know, they they were they were signed to uh, Ring of Honor. Tony did uh, tweet it out. So, I mean, at the very least, I, I presume there's going to be something. But I I don't know of any plans or anything like that. John here says, I became a fan of Jay's later on into his career. I wasn't able to see much of his early stuff due to lack of product availability to me. I loved his solo run. Condolences to the family and thoughts to his children. Yeah, man, his solo run in Ring of Honor, 
that guy was such a great worker. Like, he was so great as a tag team wrestler, and he was so great as a singles wrestler. Fantastic matches. Didn't matter if it was singles, didn't matter if it was tags. He could talk, all of that. I mean, he was fantastic. This person here says, good afternoon. I've been a wrestling fan for uh, well over 25 plus years. Many wrestlers have been favorites of mine, and the Briscoes were definitely one of those teams. However, my girlfriend has not been one to get much into wrestling. But when Tony purchased Ring of Honor and began their pay-per-views again last year, I wanted to get back onto the Ring of Honor ride and asked her if she cared to watch Final Battle with me over a year ago. She was well acquainted with FTR and was intrigued to watch their matches. And when she saw the Briscoes, she was enamored and hooked on this backwoods tag team that she was always in to watch a pay-per-view as long as the Briscoes were there. It was shocked, shocking for her when I told her about Jay's passing last night. It looked like she lost someone close. Jay and his brother were the hook for my girlfriend to join me in this world of wrestling. I would like to thank him and his brother for helping in bringing me and her together with their talent, drive, and humane humbleness. I would always hear of them. Our sincerest condolences to the family. And my girlfriend's daughter stated that she will wear a Briscoe's patch as she is in competitive cheer like Jay's daughter in support. That's from Charlie and Janice. Person says, believe it or not, my first time seeing the Briscoes was in their first match with FTR for the Ring of Honor titles in the recent series they had. I was very impressed by this tag team. The energy and charisma they have is great. So sorry to hear about Jay's passing. Man, I hope people that just learned about him this year go back and they watch some of that Ring of Honor stuff. And there's a lot. There's a lot to watch. I mean, going back decades. I mean, Mark, uh, it's Mark's birthday today, by the way. So uh, all the best to him. But, man, he couldn't even, when they started, he wasn't even allowed to work. He was too young. And, uh, you know, the uh, if you look at um, the Usos and their uh, day one gimmick, I mean, the original day one was the Briscoes. And, man, they were ROH from day one. I mean, you, you can't even... Uh, and actually, one of the promos again, he was talking about how, you know, one of these days when you look at the uh, when you look at the history books, the Ring of Honor history books, I mean, you will not be able to turn to any page in that book without the Briscoes. And uh, that was like over a decade ago. And in fact, it, it was absolutely positively the case. You cannot talk about the history of Ring of Honor in any way without talking about the Briscoes. Back in a moment with more of these Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're going through your memories of Jay Briscoe here today. 425-780-7566. If you want to text us a memory or story, Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. And we shall continue on. We'll do the day uh, the news tonight with Dave. Or you can head to the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. All the news is up there. But uh, we'll review my favorite show tomorrow with... Uh, AEW Dynamite. After not watching wrestling for a long time, my friend convinced me to go to Final Battle 2014. The main event was Jay Briscoe versus Adam Cole for the Ring of Honor World title. It was a violent spectacle, but it was the cherry on the Sunday that rekindled my enjoyment of pro wrestling. 38 is just way too young. Sending good thoughts to his wife, kids, and brother today. Conrad here says, I had the opportunity to meet and watch Jay Briscoe performed many times. He always treated me with respect. He loved his family, and he will be missed. This person here says, Jay versus another great one. Jay Briscoe cutting the promo about not being cosmetically pleasing enough for WWE should be watched by every wrestling fan. Incredible wrestler. Rest in power, Michael in Minneapolis. I smile remembering these promos. Even with his amazing talent and ability, the best thing about Jay was how he handled the controversy surrounding his comments on homosexuality. He made an ignorant statement, was reprimanded for it, and learned it became a better man. The way he has been described by his peers is he has gone out of his way to be better since that day, and that is the most admirable trait a person can have. By all accounts, he was a perfect family man. Our hearts hurt for his wife and children. God bless and rest in peace. Person says, one of my favorite Briscoe memories was at Man Up 
in Ring of Honor against Steen and Generico. My friends and I had front row seats, and that match was just absolutely incredible. Person here says, I was at the Pro Wrestling Unplugged show at ECW Arena when Jay accidentally knocked Mark's front teeth out while on the backswing with a chair. Happened right in front of us. Even though they were just 21, 22 at the time, they kept both or they kept they both kept the match going. Even then, you could tell how special they were. You know, on a on a I guess it's kind of related because talking about a tooth getting knocked out. My uh, my daughter, I talked about this on another show. She had a loose tooth, and uh, down here, and uh, and they were horsing around. And my other daughter, Hanalei, the one with the face, she accidentally super kicked Paisley in the mouth and knocked her tooth out. So I told this story, and then uh, I wake up this morning, and my wife is howling downstairs. And what happens at school is. When you lose a tooth, they give you this piece of paper, and you're supposed to write the story about how you lost your tooth. And then they compile these all together in a book, and you get to take the book home. And so all the parents get to read all of these other stories about how these kids had their teeth fall out. So this is the this is the first tooth that my daughter has lost. But man, I'm reading this book, and some of these kids are on like their 11th tooth. Lost all these teeth already. So... uh I tweeted this out to my super followers. I should tweet it out to everybody. But uh, Paisley has written her story, and uh, I was I was able to read it. I can I can read Paisley, which is not easy. But this is what she wrote. She is the daughter of a reporter, and I quote: "My sister kicked me. I did not notice it. My daddy picked it up. My sister said sorry. That is exactly what happened." She walked up to me in crimson mask. She goes, I think, I think Hanalei kicked out my tooth. I was like, what? And uh, in fact, her tooth was missing. And then we went over. It looked like a butcher shop. There's blood all over the living room floor. And there in the middle of it is this tiny little tooth that in fact had been kicked out. And uh, man, after I read that, and then I read the other kids' stories about how they lost their teeth. And man, some of these stories, they're writing the story normal. And then it gets to the tooth part, and these kids are writing in all caps. It was the greatest. But anyway, this person here says, Many times when someone passes, we wish we could have made that phone call we put off or sent that text we meant to send, or whatever the case may be. The fans, however, will never have this burden with Jay Briscoe at the conclusion of the FTR trilogy, and all throughout 2022 for that matter. They let Jay know how good the Briscoes were, how 2022 was a career year, and overall showed an outpouring of love and support. Jay left this earth, entered heaven, knowing we fans loved him and never held back. Now all we can ask is he looks over his brother, guides him through his new, unwanted wrestling life. This person here says, In 2007, after a Chicago Ridge, Illinois Ring of Honor show, I, 28 at the time, took my 11-year-old brother to his first show. The way Jay and Mark were so nice to him at Rose's Pizzeria, the post-show gathering, in between their rounds of Jack Daniels shots, probably before either had kids of their own, they treated him like they were just his crazy older cousins or something. So kind to him. Truly great men. This person says, rest in peace, Jay Briscoe. It's 2012. My 9-year-old wrestling-obsessed son and I went to his second Ring of Honor show and saw the Briscoes at the meet-and-greet tables. Josh proudly carried his replica WWE title belt to every show back then. Jay snatched up the kid's belt, handed Josh the real Ring of Honor World Tag Team title belt for the picture. Josh was just beaming. One of the best wrestling memories ever that we've talked about for 10 years now. Jay and Mark were absolute crazy men in the ring, but always gave the fans, especially the kids, as much time and energy as they possibly could. Rest easy, Jay. Let's see here. It's a long one. Bruce says, first time I ever saw the Briscoes was against AJ Styles and Red in March of 2003. They were still teenagers at the time. It was very clear from the first time watching them that they were great and had a ton of potential. I still could have never predicted how good they would get in every aspect of pro wrestling. 
When they returned to Ring of Honor in 2006, after a couple of years away from wrestling, they picked up right where they left off, except now they felt like legit stars and not just kids with potential. They started cutting fired-up promos, using a time-to-man-up catchphrase, and came off as legit badasses with a crazy side. The first Ring of Honor show I went to in August of 2006, they were in the main event against Kenta and David Richards. Very exciting match. I was instantly hooked on the Ring of Honor live experience. Went to as many shows as I could. A month later, I saw them wrestle against Kenta and Mara Fuji in a tent in Connecticut in the middle of a downpour. You'd think they were in Budokan Hall the way they were wrestling. February of 2007, I made it to Philly to see them wrestle the team of Kevin Steen and El Generico for the first time. This was at a time when Ring of Honor was loaded with talent. As crazy as it sounds today at the time, Steen and Generico, still relatively early in their careers, were considered not good enough for Ring of Honor. Then they wrestled a team like the Briscoes. The match stole the show. Steen and Generico were full-time with Ring of Honor after that. Went on to have my favorite tag team feud of all time against the Briscoes in 2007. The Boston Street Fight. Two out of three falls match. The latter war. All-time classics that anyone who is a wrestling fan should watch at some point. <clears throat> There's a long list of teams that had their best matches against the Briscoes, the Motor City Machine Guns, the Kings of Wrestling, the Grills of Destiny, the All Night Express, Roosh and Dragon Lee, more, uh, more recently FTR. I have honestly never seen a bad Briscoes match. Had a few chances to meet them after shows in the early years of Ring of Honor. They were always very fun to be around. Randomly bumped into them at the Dallas airport last year, on the Thursday morning before Mania Weekend, just said greatest tag team of all time as I walked by them. And Jay's eyes lit up and he smiled and said, hell yeah! I honestly believe no team has done it better for longer. And when you add their charisma and promos, they are an easy pick for me. The match with FTR at Supercard last year is one I'll never forget. The crowd atmosphere was just electric. The match just reinforced everything I've thought about the Briscoe since 2006. There was nothing I wanted to see more in wrestling than for Jay and Mark to be able to show the world who they are on a live primetime show. I was convinced the rest of the world would fall in love with them like I did after seeing them cut promos and wrestle. Just when I thought it was for sure going to happen in AEW, the news broke about them being banned from television. I was really upset about it, but sometimes things aren't fair. At least the trilogy with FTR happened. I'm very grateful for that. But the Briscoes were still in their prime physically wrestling as good as they ever had. Sad they will never get, uh, we will never get them versus the Lucha Bros, so many other tag teams in AEW, and, of course, heartbroken for his family and close friends. I don't have the emotional attachment to any other wrestlers like I do for the Briscoes. They were the first wrestlers I watched grow up from teenagers until their late 30s. Wrestling will never be the same to me without them. Thanks to anyone who actually reads all of this, it's strange in a way to feel like this over someone you don't really know in real life. Rest in peace, Jay Briscoe, and thanks for the memories. This person says, here's Andrew. He says, I'm just so shook up by the news of Jay Briscoe's passing. It doesn't even seem real yet. I've been a wrestling fan since 1985. Initially had some favorites before settling on Bret Hart. And like most Bret Hart fans, I didn't want to see Bret have a good performance or a good match. I wanted to see him win after his retirement. I hadn't felt that way about another competitor until 2014 when I would DVR different wrestling shows and Ring of Honor was my must-watch and the reason was Jay Briscoe. He had it all. Believable work. Even more importantly, believable promos. In an era where so many wrestlers sound like they're reciting what they've said dozens of times in front of a mirror, Jay felt real. He pulled me in, made me believe for the first time since I was a kid. I would show his promos to non-fans, turn them into hardcore Briscoe fans. There have been countless deaths in wrestling during my fandom, but not since Pillman have I felt this pit in my stomach, because I know even better things were to come. I ache for his family. I selfishly hate that I will never see his incredible talent in real time again. I will miss him forever. You know, the comparison of Jay Briscoe to Bret Hart, I don't know if I've ever heard that one before, but man, Jay Briscoe and Bret Hart, fantastic tag team wrestlers, fantastic singles wrestlers, they had a realism to them, whether it was their work or whether it was their promos. I mean, a lot more alike than they were different. I'll tell you that much. So jarring hearing the Jay Briscoe story being mentioned on NXT. For one, the sudden and so a shocking nature of the news. And second, the WWE mentioned a controversial guy who never wrestled for the company. 
This person here says, my favorite Briscoes promo is when they told the Young Bucks to call in sick to work because the Briscoes were so upset about a problem on the chicken farm that they were going to take it out on the Young Bucks. I think about that one all the time. Incredible. My favorite memories were the promos he did in his matches he had with the Second City Saints. Also, his feud with Adam Cole made me more of a fan. That is from Robert. This person says, uh, My 85-year-old father and I were sitting at a table in a bar after a Ring of Honor show. Jay and Mark came up to us and asked how we liked the show. We talked for a bit about the show and their chicken farm that night, and they always came over to say hi to us after shows. My dad and I were delighted to talk to them, and they were so kind and polite to them. Them boys brought us joy in and out of the ring. It says, rest in peace, Jay Briscoe. One of the greatest tag team wrestlers and workers of all time. I was very lucky to have seen him wrestle back in April at the Impact tapings. The biggest pop of the weekend was when the Briscoes returned. A tragic and heartbreaking loss for pro wrestling. Thoughts to his family. Person says, I've never met the Briscoes. All I've ever heard is how respectful and a loving person Jay was. I'm thinking of all the families involved in this unthinkable accident. I hope people take a moment to realize how short life really is. It could end at any moment. Don't hold grudges. Talk to your family members. Put your personal differences aside because tomorrow could be one day too late. Back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, a couple more of these before we wrap it up here today. This person says, Jay versus Mark in their fight on the farm was easily the best of all of the weird COVID-era matches we got. You can just see how much fun they're having while filming. It doesn't compare, obviously, to some of their legendary tag team matches, but it is a match I seeked out today to rewatch, and I cannot recommend it enough. This person here says, one of the great successes of Ring of Honor as a promotion is that virtually any time you bought a ticket to one of their shows over a 20-year period, you were guaranteed to see a match with Jay Briscoe, and that match was going to be good. This person here says, my favorite Jay Briscoe memory is a promo he cut, accepting a challenge against Jay White in Ring of Honor. He referenced the first match they had that went to a time limit draw. He said, Jay... You took me to the time limit. Brother, you didn't take me nowhere. If you want me to be honest with you, I just forgot we only had 15 minutes. That's from Chase. This person here says, I can't get started with my favorite Jay Briscoe or Briscoe's as a tag team moment. I still feel the ladder war against Dean and Generico was the best ladder match of all time. Then the most match moment was iconic with Age of the Fall attack. Jimmy and Jay, uh, Jay and Jimmy Jacobs cut a promo while Jay was bleeding all over him. I remember that, actually. I miss their run in Ring of Honor completely as a lapsed wrestling fan, but got to see them against the Work Horsemen at Warrior last year. It was a solid indie show with a lot of talent, but the Briscoes came off as superstars and absolutely stole the show. And finally, Ryan says, My favorite memory of Jay Briscoe was meeting him at an ROH show in Columbus, Ohio. Jay and Mark could not have been more generous with us. I want to wish all the best to Jay's friends and family, everybody listening. Appreciate you being here today. We'll be back later on tonight with Dave, talking news and more. We'll talk to you again after a while.